is my last show of the season and my last chance to visit with you before I go off on an epic adventure across, I didn't even count, I don't know, eight or nine countries. I'll be gone for several months. So follow along. I'll still be showing you what's going on on social media, but I won't get to sit down every Thursday and have these amazing chats that we get to have. So I'm really excited that you are here with me today. If you're watching in the replay, I still am going to come back to the comments and I, I'm going to chat with you. So please make sure you tell me where you are coming in from. This is one of my favorite parts because it's always such a global party and it's so fun to see from where in the world everyone is joining us. So please let me know. It also helps me know that you can hear me, which is important. So let me know where you're coming from in the chat and um, let's get started here. I wanna to talk today about um, why a transformational journey is important. Um, kind of, you know, changing your life and why you might need a transformational journey. So, you know, it's one of those things where you're currently thinking, uh, maybe you're thinking like, oh my God, I just need to shake things up. I just need, I need things to be different. So, you know, maybe you're looking for some kind of change that you can't quite put your finger on yet, or maybe you want to have a better understanding of yourself or maybe learn what you're capable of, or even just find something to get excited about again because i know after the last few years you know we've been through a lot all of us and sometimes it's like what even is the point so it's very exciting because we're going to talk about some ways that you can do this um everybody let's see oh look at everyone coming in i love it from pennsylvania hello Kay. fiona is here from los angeles Oh, look at Brenda is coming in from Louisiana. I love it. Kirsten, yay. Tuning in from LA. I love it. Hi, friend. Trisha coming in from Arkansas. Meredith Sokel. Elena, Serbia. <laughs> that is amazing. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Tarzana is in the house. Jordan. Well, hello, Jordan. Amanda is coming from Nashville. Pia from Sweden. Oh, amazing. If you haven't yet put in the chat where you're from, I always love to see that. Sebastian. All right. Hello, hello. And we've got Chicago, Sandra. All right, we've got so much to talk about today. I wanna to get into this. So, um, you know, as I was saying, at least once in life, it's kind of important to embark on a journey to see what you're capable of. Um, and on today's show, I have a very special guest. Some of you may know her if you've been following me for a while, you've seen my stories, Sherry Ott from Ott's World Travel and Life Experiences. And she and I are gonna discuss this. She has had some of the most epic transformational journeys. And um, we've taken some pretty crazy journeys together, her and I. In fact, when I was looking for pictures of us, I was like, oh my God, I forgot we did that. <laughs> so um, I wanna bring her on, but first, have you ever taken a journey that was transformative? And it doesn't, I wanna be clear, this doesn't have to be, um, like epic. It doesn't have to be that, you know, you went and hiked around the entire globe, but it could be something small. And we'll talk about that. But have you ever taken a journey that was transformative? Hit the like button. And if you're here to find out more about how you can do something like this, if you want to take a transformational journey, hit the love button. Um, let's see. We still have, let's see, who else do we have? We have the Netherlands. We have Nanette coming in from Florida. We have Beth from Pennsylvania. Bill coming in from Halifax. Ugh, I love Halifax so much. Um, I know Sherry's like sitting on the other end and she's like, bring me on so I can talk about all these places that I love. <laughs> Hello from Germany. Uh, Jane's coming from uh, Michigan. Jody from Washington State. Colorado. Calgary. United Kingdom. Um, North Van. Love it. Um, okay. So also real quick before we get started, if you, I've, I was doing a uh, trip planning series in several of my other episodes. So if you have already asked for the trip planning episode that was about how to make your, how to do discovery and how to build that must see and do list. If you asked for it, you should have it by now. So if you asked for it, and you did not receive it, please make sure to put discovery in the comments right now so that I know to follow up and send that to you. If you um, asked for last week's, which was super cool, um, that was how to create your own itinerary and kind of the science behind what um, helps you maximize your time on the road, just your energy, and also how to physically build that. If you 
ask for that. It's coming. If you didn't know about it or if you didn't ask for it yet, put itinerary in the comments because that will hopefully be going out um, probably probably like Monday or Tuesday of next week. So put itinerary in the comments. And just because it's my last show, if you did not get your free budget spreadsheet planner from my trip planning show where I showed you how to create a travel budget, put budget in the comments. I just want to make sure before I go out on the road that you have the tools this summer to create you your own unforgettable experiences. So remember that's uh, discovery, itinerary, or budget, and I will get those out to you. Now, if you want today's notes and a replay of the show, please put notes. You guys have like so much homework to do right now already, right? Are your fingers tired? <laughs> put notes in the comments because this is going to be so good and you're going to want to go back. And so I'm going to make sure that you get a transcript of the show so you can read it when you wake up at two in the morning and you have crippling anxiety. Okay. So um, before we uh, go on and look, everybody, okay. Everybody, I love it. I love it. We've got everybody commenting. You're getting all the notes that you need. Um, I also want to talk about today's prize is very exciting. Sherry herself brought this in for us. So we're going to have to do a big yay. Thank you, Sherry. Um, it is a Wallaroo hat and you actually will have a voucher to get the hat of your choice off of their website. And they have beautiful hats. Sherry's going to tell you more about it, but how do you win one of these hats? How do you win today's prize? Well, if you, anytime you hear Sherry and I say something that resonates, that sticks with you, that's like a really um, like, oh yeah, that's a great tip or a trick or that, even that quote, whatever, put the word nugget and then whatever it is. Um, and just, you don't have to get, you don't have to write a novel, but just a little bit of, because it also helps other people because they're like, oh my God, yeah, that was a great tip. So put the word nugget and whatever you hear that we say, that means something, that's a great tip. The more you comment, the more opportunity you have to win. And at the end of the show, we will pick the winner. Um, and I'll have to ask Sherry if it's, um, we'll bring her on and ask her if it is um, US only, or if you can also get it in, um, if you're outside of the United States. So that is that. Now, again, thank you so much for joining me. If you Join me before you already know, but if this is your first time, welcome. I'm Juliana Dever. I am an experiential travel expert. I've been traveling the world for about 25 years now. I've been to over 60 countries. I've lived in four and I travel really deep so I can bring back that insider information to help you take a more meaningful trip. Um, and I also work with women in Eastern Europe to curate in cultural immersion tours to their country. And you can come travel with me. I've already done all the work for you. I have two tours left this year that you can go on. You can either come with me to the country of Georgia. Uh, and that closes, that, that registration closes on uh, May 20th, next Friday, or the country of Slovenia. And bonus, if you come with me to Georgia, you get bam, bam. There's actually three pieces of this gorgeous Delsey luggage. You get that as a gift. like like just a gift to go on vacation. So um, now it is time for me to introduce my guest. So today I have my friend Sherry Ott, um, and she is, uh, she was, is, I'm gonna say she is, not was, a pioneer of travel blogging. Um, she's been writing about her travel lifestyle around the world um, and her adventures on otsworld.com since 2006. Um, in her 11 years, she's lived nomadically, um, and she circled the globe multiple times, visiting all seven continents. She's lived in Vietnam. She's hiked the Annapurna Circuit with her father. She finished the 10,000-mile, I'm sorry, metric, I don't know what that is, 10,000-mile <laughs> Mongol rally across Mongolia, uh, walked the Camino de Santiago, kayaked in Antarctica, herded reindeer in the Arctic, so jealous, and drove an, uh, an auto rickshaw across India. <sighs> Welcome, Sherry Ott, everybody. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hi, it's so cool to be here and to watch you do what you do best. I am so impressed, Juliana. I, uh, <laughs> it's so cool. I remember us meeting the first time and yeah. 
like learning that you were an actress and I'm just like, why do you want to get into travel blogging? And <laughs> you actually and said that to me. <laughs> and you're like, this is crazy. Why would you want to do this? <laughs> anyway, but you do, this is wonderful. This is so fun to just be a part of. <laughs> Yay. Um, before we get into our topic, do you just want to talk for a minute about your uh, Wallaroo hat Ooh. that you're wearing and why people want to win this? Well, yeah, because summer, first of all, and sun, <laughs> um, oh, and yes. can be fashionable. <laughs> no, yes. um, I actually met Wallaroo, uh, gosh, about four years ago. Um, they're a Colorado company. I live in Colorado. Uh, when I'm home, that is. And um, I met them. It's a women-owned company. And I have always been a hat person when I travel. I know you are too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we're just whatever. It's great for travel. You have bad hair days. You need sun protection, all that stuff. Um, and I met them and I fell in love with them. And they have such a huge, wide variety of hats. Uh, and they, like I said, they're women-owned from Colorado. So I kind of I loved that part. Anyway, I became an ambassador for them, uh, and I wear their product all the time, obviously. And I love that you just called them up and you're like, hey, can we give one of these hats to uh, Juliana's viewers? And they were like, let's do it. Yeah. Um, is it, <laughs> is it uh, US only? Uh, no, I don't believe so, because um, I know. OK, but everybody I'm that's not in the United States, today is your day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the deal. So you get a $70 voucher to use on the website. So okay. um, if that does not cover enough for shipping or whatever, then you may have an issue there. But there's no restrictions as okay. far as countries go. Um, they're actually, they were kind of formed out of Australia too, yet they're based here in Colorado. So they love the international audience. Look, and look, we have Vicky. Hi, Sherry. That's my favorite hat. I love it. <laughs> oh, yes. This is, well, and let me just tell you. So this is like more of their fashionable hats. It's a, it's a little smaller brim. I wear it all the time because I love it for traveling in cities. Um, but like the real good sun protection, you need to have about a three inch brim or larger. And they have tons of those. I've got like huge floppy hats and it's ridiculous. My whole closet is filled with I'm hats. so excited. I'm so excited. So remember, if you want to win today, just anytime you hear us talk about something that kind of uh, resonates with you as a tip or a trick that you're like, wow, light bulb, put in the comments, nugget, and then just a few words about what you heard that was meaningful. Um, also, a big shout out to Miss um, <laughs> Dever, my husband. He's uh, listening from Pecos, New Mexico. Hey. hey. He's, uh, he's shooting a new TV show, you guys. I'm not saying anything else. Um, okay. So look, and look, it's already going in. Look, we've got Leanne, Nugget, hats are so important. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and too, you picked up on the uh, three inch brim. I know, I didn't even know that. All right, we've got so much to talk about. Let's get into it. Um, transformational travel. I wanna start off um, with a quote that really hit me. I think this is when I first moved to Hollywood in my 20s. Um, the French-born American writer Anaïs Nin, for those of you who are Nin, Nin, um, she, ha, uh, one of her, she's got so many, she's just such an amazing writer, but um, the thing that hit me was, and I'm going to just read it so I don't misquote it um, or paraphrase it, but, and the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. And so I think that kind of is going to be what we talk about. So transformational travel. What are we what are we talking about? Why should this be on anyone's radar? And I want for anyone who's questioning, what do you what's what do you mean by this? What's transformation? Um, kind of like the illustration of the uh, caterpillar and the butterfly. Um, <laughs> it's this act <laughs> of changing in, in your form. It's caused by a, a like um, a disruption of significant magnitude, a dis like disruption to your everyday life. It's, um, or as we're gonna talk about, like a, a deliberate journey that uh, is associated with profound and radical change. So um, Sherry is the perfect person to talk about this. So. Let's talk about like your very first transformational journey. What was it? And uh, kind of talk to us about uh, what you discovered as a result. Gosh, you know, I love your quote, first of all. And I want you to know that I use kind of a variation of that to describe what got me on my first 
journey that absolutely transformed my life. Um, so very, very appropriate. Uh, back in, well, I had worked in corporate, like IT jobs for 14 years. I was 36 years old. I was tired of it. Um, I had never taken a break and I was kind of just like your quote. I mean, I just, I wasn't happy and I knew I needed a change. And back in 2006, I basically quit my corporate career for one year. I thought it was really going to be one year to travel around the world for a year to have really a transformation. Um, not only, I mean, I wanted a break because we all need a break. Right. And I wanted to do like a lot of the stuff that uh, I was worried I didn't want to wait for retirement for because you never know if retirement's going to happen, if you're going to yeah. make it, what shape you're going to be in. So I was just like, I'm 36, I'm healthy, and I'm going to go take a year off. Um, but at the same time, I also really wanted to explore. I was questioning at that point in my life, is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Um, because at that point, job. yeah, because okay, at yeah. that point, I think I was like that. That's what you do, right? You work, you work until you retire. And, you know, and back in 2006, that was quite normal. I, I have to say things have changed now, which is really lovely to see. Yeah, pretty quickly, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, I really wanted to explore if I wanted to stay in this same career, basically. Uh, I was, the weird thing was about my career was that it kind of chose me. I didn't choose it and I ran with it and it was a great career. But after 14 years, I'm like, no. And I really missed something creative in what I was doing. So that was the initial reason for taking off. And there are a number of things where I don't know, like I, I didn't at that time take off and go, I'm going to take a transformational journey. No. Um, <laughs> I, was like, I need to get the hell out of here. <laughs> but, but yet I still did know in the back of my head that if I like came back and did the same thing, I was probably going to be a little bit disappointed in myself. But I also wanted to kind of figure out like what spoke to me when I was on the road. Um, and it ended up being the best thing I ever could have done because once I actually stepped away from that everyday routine that we're in, that we're locked into, and sometimes, and not the routine is bad. It was great. I had a great life in New York City and working and getting a paycheck every day or every week. <laughs> but, you know, it was just, it, 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 it was great to get out and actually find that I was way more capable than what I thought I was back in my routine that I was in every day. And so that was really the key for me was to step away from everything and, you know, shake things up, as you said before. Yeah. And, um, and, and what I do want to point out to everyone who's listening, I promise you, you really are stronger than you think oh, you are. God, yes. And how, <laughs> to go through your entire life and never find that out is such a missed opportunity, but you, you have your own back. You really do. Um, and sometimes it's, it's to do something that you didn't expect you could. And whether you failed or whatever that goal was that you maybe you're like, I thought I was going to do, like I was even going to run a marathon and I didn't, I didn't finish. No, you, you did it. And just to have, to, to realize that you could even strike out and do something that should give you confidence to try again and to try again and to try again, because the things that you will find out about yourself and the things that you will accomplish will lead to such a, a bigger life. So I just want everyone who's listening, because I think Sherry's going to talk about some stuff where you're going to be like, Oh my God, I could never, <laughs> I could never do these things. It's not even about that. Um, but I want to talk to you. I want Sherry for you to, um, to tell everyone about like, okay, so now you're like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm going to go do something. How did you even know what it was that you wanted to do? Like how to, where did you go? Tell us what you actually did when you left. Um, first of all, I was not an expert traveler. I didn't even have a passport until I was 30. So don't think that I was one of these people that like had traveled all my life. I didn't know what the hell I was doing, which also probably describes why I was crying the whole week before I left. I should have been super happy, but I was terrified. Um, but I basically, I chose a very rough, rough outline of where I was going to go, except I did plan the first three months. And that's one of the things that I always kind of tell people in travel 
that are going to travel for a while is plan the first third of your journey and then leave the rest to see what will happen. Um, I'm a type A person, so I needed to plan because I'm like, oh my God, I can't just like, I need to know where I'm going to sleep. Um, so I planned out the first three months and then the rest kind of, I had a very rough outline. I started in, um, Africa. I flew off to Kenya. Why? Why start small? (laughs) Well, and it's ironic because you talk about like, you know, try things and they may not always work out. And that's exactly what happened. So my whole point to go to Kenya was to climb Kilimanjaro and I failed. I didn't make it. And that was the first part of my trip. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, this is not going to work. Like I could have probably turned around and went back home at that point because I was just mentally, like it it threw me. I just thought for sure that I would make it and I didn't. Um, But I kept going. (laughs) I ended up in Africa. I ended up going to about 23 countries, I would say. I I, uh, stretched my budget based because of where I traveled once I kind of learned. Um, and I ended up on the road for 16 months. Um, I stuck a lot in Asia. I found out that I absolutely loved developing countries and, uh, kind of traveling close to the ground and slowly. So whereas I, when I started out, I thought I was going to hit all like the main popular spots, you know, Paris, Rome, all that stuff. Um, I ended up in Vietnam and Laos and you know, China, and, you know, so, so right away I learned a lot about myself of what I liked and, but I never would have known that. And then I also, at the same time, obviously I was keeping this little website, but not for any reason more than just to let my family know what was happening. Um, and that I was, was alive. So back in the day. <laughs> I know, it was, it was great. You it were thinking great. about monetizing it. Oh. You're like... <laughs> blog wasn't even, I mean, it really wasn't even in our vocabulary. It certainly wasn't a profession. So, so yeah. So, and then that kind of just grew and I grew with it and I took a lot of chances and, you know, long story short, I ended up on, I stayed on the road. I never went back to my career. Um, That was the big change. And I found that I loved marketing and I loved writing and I loved being creative and photography and learning something new every day. That was huge to me. Um, That's actually you know, I've been really into neuroscience lately. Cause mm. maybe I'll be a neuroscientist next. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just like, well, what should I do now? Um, <laughs> I, I, you know, really fascinated by the idea of how our brain works. And I was listening to a really great podcast. Um, but the, the idea of your mood, you, you know, you, you, your mood follows action. And it's, you, you have to change your behavior if you want to change your thoughts. So you, meaning like you can't just sit around and think yourself into uh, um, like, I'm going to change this job. And every day you go to your job and you think about it. <laughs> like you actually have to get yourself mm-hmm. into an agitated state where you must respond. And that response, that action of I'm going to get the hell out of here and just drop in someplace. That's what actually begins that transformation is the, the, the action of it all. So that's another piece to, you know, why we're talking about this today. And, you know, Sherry brought up when we were having our conversation um, a couple days ago, you know, like just to get excited about something even again, oh, you know, like you so can't cool. sit around and maybe write yourself a list of things to get excited <laughs> about <laughs> because you have to change your physical space, you have to change your routine. And so let's talk about what do transformational journeys look like? Because I don't, I also don't want people to get um, kind of back away thinking, well, I have to, I have to pick uh, climb Kilimanjaro or, (laughs) or I'm not going to transform myself. (laughs) So, I mean, I want to say that this is different for everyone. And it's something, simply put, it's about getting you out of your routine. Yeah. It's getting you out of your environment. Um, when you can't do things like you always did them, when you're forced to become creative to solve a problem, um, you that's when profound change happens because your res- your typical response mechanisms, you can't, those aren't go-tos in- anymore. Yeah. Um, so... So let's talk about another one of your really big, crazy ones, and then let's scale it down for people <laughs> who aren't just going to uh, 
do something absolutely mental, <laughs> like the uh, Mongol rally or the rickshaw race. Uh, <laughs> which one do you want to talk about? Well, let's talk. Well, the Mongol rally that did actually okay. come first. So that was after about six years on the road. Um, you know, even weirdly, even that kind of abnormal life on the road becomes normal after you do it for like five, six years, right? <laughs> because that's just how our minds work. But after about six years on the road, I'm like, I, I need something different. And I came across, I think I, I think I was looking for, you know, a different kind of journey or something. And um, I came across a blog post about this thing called the Mongol Rally, where you drive you you get a car in London, and not just in like not a new car or anything like that. You have to get a, in fact, what they say, a totally inappropriate car. A totally so, inappropriate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like square wheels. Or, <laughs> <laughs> Practically, it had to be less than a one point two liter engine or something like that. One point two liter engine and below. So you're talking kind of small car. Yeah. Right? Um, and it couldn't be new. Like, so you buy a car in London and then you drive it all the way across a couple of continents to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. And at the time when I was doing it, it's, it's kind of changed a little bit now, but at the time when I was doing it, if your car and your team actually made it to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia in an inappropriate car, um, then you left the car there and it was donated uh, and stayed among What was left of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they, if, if you've ever been to Mongolia, I, have, I can't remember. I have, yeah. Okay, then it's like they'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> they'll take whatever they can get, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the idea. There was absolutely zero support in between. Uh, there was a beginning party and an ending party, and it was up to you to make it across all these countries through the visas, through the bandits, through the bribes, through everything. Did you come across um, bandits? No, but other people did, yeah. And you, oh, did yeah. you bring was things really... to bribe people with? <laughs> what? Yeah, like, did you have to bribe anyone? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. This is a, that's a good life skill to know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I about went to jail in um, Kazakhstan. I was, like, practically, well, they wanted, and then it was all a bribe thing. It took two hours, but we, I talked them down from $500 to, I think we ended up paying $63. Well, that was a pretty good bargain. Oh, yeah. Life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a whole bribe budget. So, um, oh my God. I do not advise bringing a bribe budget on your normal travels, but <laughs> you know well, what? I, no. I think it depends no. on where you're going. It can help. Never know. It's like I said, once again, a good life skill to have. Maybe have a bribe budget. And then if you need it, you don't feel like um, you're like, oh man. Like you're being taken advantage to my, my, uh, my truffle pasta budget <laughs> now just have extra bribe money everyone yes. new, new travel tip <laughs> <laughs> um but you know the reason why i decided to do this i am not a thrill seeker like this normally but in those six years that i've been traveling around the world one of the things that had always intimidated me even though i felt really comfortable as a traveler i was always intimidated to drive in other countries I don't know why, maybe because I was traveling in a lot of developing countries and yeah. if you've traveled in, I mean, it's, it's scary to even cross the street. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so in a lot of those countries, yeah. like, not driving. And, yeah. And it's just like, I, so I think that was uh, honestly, not only did it sound kind of really cool to me and terrifying at the same time, which I kind of like that on the edge of I'm interested, but I'm scared. Um, but I really did want to like learn how to drive in other countries and whether that be on the wrong side of the road or the right side of the road, whatever. I mean, I just, I wanted to try it. And I thought there's no better way than spending six weeks in a car driving across continents. than you know, I will be yeah. comfortable at the end. Just throw your, you know, but sometimes having that, putting yourself on a, like committing to something, Mm -hmm. that you don't that you're afraid to do is what's going to propel you towards it because otherwise it's just like someday yeah, yeah. i'll get to that i'll do it and you're like well i just you know i had to this is the way that you kind of um 
work with yourself to actually achieve yeah. things that you want to do. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, why not throw yourself in the deep end? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, I had to do it, and I, you know, it's it wasn't crazy. I knew how to drive. Yeah, no, so, I know. There's definitely. Yeah, I remember even just turning onto the, um, what is it? You know, where you're going to the Champs Elysees, like that when you go down that boulevard, and there's oh, like seventeen. Yeah, and you I remember the being in the car with my Dutch friend Linda, and she's she drives in Europe, and she's like, "This is hell," and she actually, <laughs> a U-turn in the middle of the whole Champs Elysees. <laughs> Oh my God. That was probably more dangerous than just going forward. Yes. But yeah, driving <laughs> in other countries can be scary. Um, so let's um so let's just scale it down for a minute and talk about, you know, like a transformational journey again is different for everybody. So I know for some people, you know, what is it that you're tackling, perhaps? You know, what is the behavior that is gonna inspire this change? Like if it's I, I know for some people, it's even going to the airport by themselves mm -hmm. is, you know, I don't ever think that you need to have a big, crazy um, goal, even that first time out. It really depends on, you know, your comfort level. And I want you to get past your comfort level. So don't misunderstand me. But I also don't want you to go into a full blown panic attack. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, um, so, I mean, like, even like my mom, I was having her meet me uh, on an international trip. And the thought of going to the airport by herself was a big deal for her, you know, and so and meeting me in another country. And so don't underestimate the the change that you will, the confidence that you'll get, the courage to keep going when you even take these small transformational journeys. It could be that you spend a weekend somewhere. It could be that you go on a on a trip with me you know like it does i don't want you to think it always has to be a 1.2 liter engine driving mm -hmm. people across europe um so <laughs> with that in mind um, really <laughs> what baby steps are very good i baby mean it's really look yeah. wherever you are in your journey you jump off as far as you need to but just jump for the love of god freaking jump okay because <laughs> no transformation is happening inside your house um before we go any further i do want to stop really quick and for anyone who is just now joining us um not only is sherry wearing a hat because she looks adorable but we are giving away a wallaroo hat today and so sherry do you want to let everybody know that how they can uh well i'll tell you how they can win one but anything else you want to tell us about wallaroo hats um sure i would love to uh one thing to know uh what is it it's may right so may is i know may is skin cancer awareness month so which is a big deal especially at wallaroo because um they've been certified uh to you know they all of their hats are certified as skin cancer protective um and they all have ratings and so on and as i mentioned before normally the three inch brims are the best uh but all, if you go onto their site whoever is the lucky winner and gets to choose um if you go onto their site, you'll see all kinds of different uh, styles and brims and stuff like that. But it is super sun protection. And also just a little maybe hint um, that I believe coming up very soon, they are going to have a sale around the idea of um, Skin Cancer Protection Month. So just a little thing to know. Go check them out. Maybe sign up for their newsletter. I don't know. And you may get some really good deals. Yeah, so if you don't win the hat today and you're still interested in one of these really cool sun protective hats, and they're actually, there's a lot of different styles. I was on their website yesterday. I was like, ooh, I'm gonna need this one and this one. Yep. And this one. Oh, um, they're really good for travel too, I should say. Oh, yeah, you know what? Yeah, because I saw they have, uh, that they fold up. I'm gonna put, let me put in the chat, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I smash the heck out of all of my hats. Oh my gosh, I yes. Lose them, Rachel's on the call. She knows how many hats I've lost over the course of our uh, journeys together um so yeah i just put it i put it awesome. in the chat you should be able to oops no um but it's in the chat you guys should be able to see it so if you don't win and you're still interested in looking at all of their cool styles and maybe catching up on their sale that's where you can do it um and how do you win make sure you put nugget and then whatever tip you hear from us that you're like that's a great tip um, so let's talk about, um, 
this idea of okay so the, you and i were talking about like what what value we can provide while people are listening to our crazy stories and <laughs> um which i I haven't talked about any of the stuff we did together. And you know what? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm zigging and zagging all over the place, but let me share. Because Sherry and I have been to, geez, we were in Sweden together. Yeah. Um, that's where I found the video of us eating like licorice candy on a bus and saying smurgen a lot. <laughs> uh, and then we, uh, but we were in, um, we were in the Andes Mountains together. And then we we were, and I remember we stayed in the back of a restaurant and our travel oh, wow. made food poisoning. And we were just trying to stay um, um, conscious. <laughs> Warm. Do you remember how cold it was too? When you like, get to 16,000 so feet, which I forget what that is, uh, metric, I, I think it's like 9,000 meters. Um, yeah, it would be uh, 16,000, like 4,000 meters. Okay. 9,000 meters would be a thousand. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember we were drinking like the coca leaves, like coca leaf yeah. tea. And we at one point tried to even drink, split a 40 ounce of beer between four people. And none of us, like, you really feel like you're underwater. Um, that was, And then we took a bus over the Andes and down into Chile, into the Atacama Desert. And I remember I found another video of us like <laughs> eating random sandwiches and a hard biscuit oh. and a 12 hour wow. bus ride over the Andes. <laughs> Yeah, we've, uh, we've had journey. it was, I mean, for me, I honestly, um, I'm not as adventurous as you, um, because I will not bungee jump, not ever. Thank <laughs> you. Don't ask. Um, but, um, I had a panic attack at the airport in, in Houston, Texas, and I actually called Rachel. I don't know if she's still here. Yep. Julia has lost so many hats. Rachel's still here. I called her cause I was like, I, I don't know what it was. I suddenly, I was just gripped with the fear. And that, that is something that is hard to navigate because sometimes you're like, I'm having a fear, so I should listen to it because it's trying to tell me if I go, I'm going to crash into the Andes and have to eat my seatmate, right? <laughs> so you're like, I should listen to this fear. I'm having it for a reason. And the truth <laughs> is, no, you, no, you're not. Um, and Rachel actually calmed me down and she was like, you're going to be fine and um, just do it. And so I got on the plane and I remember you met me the next day because we were sharing yeah. in the hotel room. And then we went and did all those crazy adventures. And when I got home, I, I really, it did, it transformed how I thought about myself and also how I thought about fear because before I let it guide it let I let it make my decisions too often and once I realized that it was kind of that amygdala that kind of fight <laughs> or flight like it's just trying to keep me safe but really it was just trying to keep me small and so like for me when we talk about the idea of processing or synthesizing um transformation once you've gone through it you know that was that is a lesson it, it sinks in over time, but the realization that when I have those crazy fears, I don't have to believe every crazy negative thought in my head. I can just take a, you know, take a chance. And I felt like such a, you know, like I felt like, <laughs> oh my gosh, if I can do that, what else can I do? <laughs> yeah, I would be willing to bet, because that was quite a journey for both of us. I would be willing <laughs> to bet that after that trip, your confidence level in travel in yourself in all kinds of stuff probably increased quite a lot yeah yeah right. and i think that's i think it's really important i have another quote if you guys will all indulge me do you guys want to hear another quote because <laughs> let me know in the chat are you guys you up for it um i love how you guys yeah and i know we're in a little bit of a lag so all the yeses are going to come after i've ever started reading it but i, I again <laughs> yes yeah they all say yes <laughs> yes um, oh and i love yeah, see, like everybody's picking up on this, you know, this, um, you're, it's not as bad as your brain thinks it is. Sandra, this is so true. And yeah, Leanne's getting it too. The, the fear, it really does keep you small. Yeah, Jenny. I love, I love Jenny's also kind of throwing in some sass in her comment. <laughs> uh, yeehaw. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, 
And even Jordan, you know, her experience was I learned how to be a more social person after mm-hmm. my trip to England. I'm actually grateful for that. Even my parents noticed my confidence boost. Jordan, that that's huge. Like that, that's really is what it's all about. Um, yes, yeah, so we do. So this next quote kind of applies to what we've just been talking about. Again, Annie Sneed, because she's kind of incredible. Um, but life is a process of becoming a combination of states we have to go through where people fail is that they wish to elect a state and remain in it. This is a kind of death. So think about, you know, if you're just staying in one state and maybe that for you is safety, that's actually a kind of, you're not living. And if you're not living, what are you doing? (laughs) So anyway, let's talk about another one of your, um, one of your journeys, one of your transformational journey, journey, Germany's not, um, that kind of put you through some of these states um, and how you synthesized it. And that was your walk on the Camino de Santiago. Yeah. Can you explain to everybody what that is and, sure. and what it was like? Um, I think probably some people have probably heard of it. Uh, it is a an ancient pilgrimage across Spain, basically, across Northern Spain to the city of Santiago. Uh, and It is, there's been as much movies about it and so on. It's basically a walk. It's a long distance walk across the country. But the beauty of it is that um, because there are so many little towns and villages along the way, you can just stay in a village every night uh, in an albergue or whatever. So it's not like you have to camp and really, really rough it. But you're talking about 500 miles or so um, to walk across and... But it's not a, it's not like a hike. You're not, you know, uh, what do I want to say? Like crawling up boulders and stuff like that. Um, it's like one of those religious pilgrimages where you just keep going until your knees are bloody. And- <laughs> no. <laughs> now, granted, I did have a lot of blisters and there's a lot of, lot of foot issues. That's for sure. Because you're walking about, I don't know, well, anywhere between 15 and 20 miles a day, um, every day. And so that if you you will learn how to take care of blisters in your feet really quickly. It's almost like a marathon a day. Yeah. (laughs) Talk about slow travel. Like it's a beautiful way to see Spain. I went in the spring at this time of year, actually. So one of my most profound things that came out of it was like, I felt like for the first time in my life, I really experienced spring because every day I was out in it you know, eight hours a day walking. And from the day that I started, it took five weeks. Okay. From the day that I started um, to the day that I finished, like whole like vineyards and, you know, had come up, you know, they started as little brown stumps, but by the end, by the last week, there were leaves on them. And, you know, so it was really, really kind of cool to just watch the world and mother nature do its thing. Yeah, an experience like rebirth. Yeah. And it was kind of a rebirth. And it's, um, I said, it's a historic journey and it actually can be a religious journey for some. That's, that's where the history is rooted in for this. But for me, I just walked it because I wanted to walk it. Someone told me about it. And it was one of these things where I'm like, well, that kind of sounds interesting. And I just, decided to do it. I, I don't even know why. Something pulled me there. Um, and then kind of in the middle of it, I realized, well, I, I, did, I did know that I needed a, a moment to kind of slow down. And there's nothing slower than walking across the country. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, You know, before I forget, I realized I wanted to touch on this. You and I talked about it the other day. Um, and it's that idea of how, how if you're thinking about doing something like this, how do you figure out what your personal transformational journey could be? Mm. And you and I talked about, you know, what tips could we provide for people to figure out what it is that they want to do? And, you know, one of the things that we hit on was that sometimes if you're just open, it will come to you. And you just said that about, you know, so like, What's your feeling on on how to how a pers- a transformational journey like how to find it or how to figure out what it is for you? I think you really have to listen inside um, to see like what kind of things sort of appeal to you. 
Um, and you can, you know, for me, like I said, the normally I read something or I see something like someone's done something and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And I can tell right away if it's something that it's like cool, like I would like to do that or like, no way that's not for me. I mean, you know yourself. Yeah. Um, and then what I do is I start to explore more about it. Uh, also, one of the things I think the best thing you can do is probably if it's something completely new that you've never done before, or a new hobby or sport or something, is start to dip your toe into it and meet other people who have done it or have that interest and, you know, join a club, do, you know, whatever, like, and start to see like, Ooh, is this something I'm really interested in or not? And you'll know right away. Yeah. Um, when I was going to leave my job back in 2006, I knew I needed a change, right? And I told you I wanted to be more creative. So I was starting to take, I'm like, I'm going to take a painting class. I'm going to take a, you know, like I, I took a creative writing class. I took like mainly because I was just searching. And I knew right away after doing the painting class, I'm like, no, not me. And then I came across, I took a photography <laughs> class. <laughs> I took a photography class and that whole thing. And then that was it. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is the one. Um, and that was great because it ended up playing into what I do now. But yeah, absolutely. yeah, I think you have to get out there and try things and meet some people who do that, find meetup groups and stuff like that. Listen really close inside. Um, but start to dip your toe into some of those in environments and communities and see if it continues to resonate with you. Yeah. And, and I also, you know, I've talked about this before on my show, um, but that idea of that cognitive bias, you know, your brain has this amazing filter, mm -hmm. this particular activating system. I, I think um, I might be slightly activation system, but it, it's, a, it's a filter that keeps you from going crazy. Because if you took in everything at once, you would it would be overload. But what it does is some things come through. And it you can train your brain to have things come through that are going to help you move forward. But you know how it works if you suddenly decide that you want to buy a Toyota Corolla or whatever. And then all of a sudden you see them everywhere. Oh you know, God. So when you tune into, I want to take a pilgrimage or a transformational journey. And you allow yourself to pay attention to those mm -hmm signs suddenly you'll see elephant sanctuaries like everywhere or then you'll get somebody will send you a little elephant meme or you know like don't ignore the small signs around you because it's trying to tell you something so pay attention to that you'll be surprised what keeps coming up maybe it's you keep getting um uh pictures of cheesy bread in the country of georgia and that means you're supposed to travel with me to georgia this year because i'm not doing it next year um so Let's, uh, I want to make sure we finish close to on time. So let's talk about what your next big journey is because you have something new, a I new do. transformational journey that's really epic. And um, one of the reasons that I wanted you on today is because I'll be gone for the summer and I won't be able to showcase this. So I want everyone who's interested in following Sherry's newest journey. I want you to uh, make sure you're following her on Facebook or Instagrams because you don't want to miss what she's got next. What are you doing? Oh, goodness. This actually kind of came out of that Camino de Santiago uh, journey. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but it's hard to even figure out where to start on this. But um, back in 1984, I was 14 years old and my dad was 47. And for some unknown reason to me um, and to our whole family, he decided that he was going to start walking from capital to capital in the United States. This was before Forrest Gump, before <laughs> he ever had. Before yeah. Forrest Gump. It's important to know. Yes. We did not know before. Before. I don't know where he got the idea from. I have no idea. That's one of the things I'm going to hope to figure out. Um, but then for the next 25 years, he continued to follow this dream um walking from capital to capital and he started we grew up in illinois so he started in springfield and went to madison wisconsin um that was the first one that he did and he would walk about 30 miles a day or 25 miles a day kind of like the camino de santiago yeah. um, and he would talk into a little recorder and he would then transform he'd listen to it he'd write down all the notes when he got home and then 
back in 1984, we had a Commodore 64, and my mother then would type all those handwritten notes into a computer. Wait, for, for people who, can you tell people what a Commodore 64 is for the younger viewers? It was one, it was one of the first computers, home computers. Uh, I don't know what we had to go through back then, okay? Oh my God. It's with oh, your geez. phones in your hands. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no phones, no anything. So um, anyway, so he was recording all of this too. I don't know if he was going to do something with it, write a book. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, like I said, I was 14 when he started. All 14-year-olds pretty much were embarrassed by their parents. And so, <laughs> especially, and I just, I didn't understand it. I thought it was weird. I I just thought he was weird. Like, why would you do this? Why can't you just be like every other parent and be normal? And that was kind of a that was kind of a um, a common theme throughout my whole life with my dad. My dad always had to be different. Always had to be different. He could never do anything that anyone else did. And as a teenager and growing up, I hated it. And then, and then I'm walking on through Spain and realize. One day, there's a smell that kind of like brought back, you know how smells can bring back memories? Yeah. A smell brought back this vivid, vivid memory of something I hated as a kid that my dad would make us do every summer. And, you know, it just reminded me of how much like he had to be so different and make us different. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, holy shit, I'm him. I'm walking across the, street. <laughs> the moment that hits you, the day. Yeah, you know, you can, you know. Uh, a special anyway. moment in everyone's life. Oh God! When you realize I am my parents, I am right? My parents, no. But not only I am my parents, but I've thought a lot about this over the last six years. But everything that I used to chastise them for that I didn't like about what I thought I didn't like about my life growing up, I realize I am so thankful they gave me that life. Like, right. you know, it made me who I am today. This person who's constantly searching the new, the quirky, the different. Um, anyway, so my dad is still alive. He's 85 years old. Thank you for answering that leading question. <laughs> I know people probably think that, um, my mom and dad are both still alive. They're both 85. Uh, my, my dad ended up doing that for 25 years while doing a full-time job. So he would do it on vacations and on weekends. And he dragged me along cause I was the kid still at home and, you know, whatever. And my mother ran logistics for him. She would pick him up and drop him off and get hotels. And they would communicate with post-it notes on stop signs because we didn't have cell phones. Communicate uh, with post-it notes on stop signs. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh we my lost God. him. We lost him a few times. We called the police. He was picked up for like a questioning for a small town murder because he was this crazy unknown stranger walking through a stranger a town. walking through yeah. town. Oh my God. so some funny stories for sure but he finished about 23 of them and he and it was about 4,000 miles and then after 25 years he just kind of he puttered out my mother was like I am not doing this anymore I've got oops, I've got uh oh, can I hold on a second my bad <laughs> I know I can't get it off. Dang it. I love how Rachel wants to bring post-it notes on yeah. stop signs back. Um, <laughs> that would be nice. I want to talk about what you're doing besides uh, chiming. Um, yes, sorry, my bad. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show people the map. Ooh, yeah. uh, I want you to tell us what you are doing. Yes. So I have decided, since he didn't finish it, and I feel like it needs to be finished, um, I am going to finish it, but I'm going to do it by bike. So he came up with this route. This was the original route. And th there's different colors. It's kind of hard to see the yellows. The yellows are in progress. The blacks, he have, he never did. So those are the ones that I'll be finishing or doing. Oh. And the red are ones that he actually finished. So okay. it kind of goes in a counterclockwise around the United States. Um, so you need to do... Well, all right, guys, I'm not trying to make anyone throw up. I just want to get in a lot of the West, the big West, the big distances, okay. the deserts, the mountains, which is a little daunting, more than daunting. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and I am going to, so I'm going to take these on, probably try to do about five or six a year. I'm not going to do it okay. all at once because I'm not going to drive myself crazy. I just, 
Um, cause I, I still like to do other travel. <laughs> right, writing. right. Not just bicycling. Um, yeah. Yeah. But this summer I'm going to start the first one. So you can kind of see the little purple star there in South Dakota. Uh -huh. Um, that's one that he was kind of halfway through that star is where he ended. And it's actually very close to where my mom and dad live today. So I am going to be driving up there in July with my bike. And by the way, totally new to biking. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not, Sherry? <laughs> I know. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, honestly. And it's and you may think that I'm brave, but I am terrified. Like I go through lots of I've been keeping kind of a personal diary and journey about this, a video diary about it. And it's uh -huh. I don't know what I'm doing, but I just find that post, I have to keep moving forward. You put post-it notes on stop signs so our viewers can find you. If in oh, that would be so cool! <laughs> like that's I know Rachel said, bring back the post-it notes on stop signs. I might um, have to. I want to make sure that you know. And if you're watching this, you know maybe if you're following along when Sherry starts this, and what you're starting it in July. Yeah, July like 19th. Okay, so when you follow her along, if she's coming through your town. Like oh. stand alongside the road and give her some water or something. Yeah, or <laughs> on a bike and come join me. Or just tell me like where to go eat that night and have a good beer. I don't know. Um, <laughs> go buy some <Sherry> beer. <laughs> yeah. um, this is so. Now, how can how can people find you on this journey? Where are you on the socials? Ooh, socials. That's pretty easy. I'm at Otsworld. O T T S W O R L D. So. One of the things I'll be doing is pretty covering it live, probably and very extensively on Instagram. I'm a big Instagram user, Instagram stories, that type of stuff. So I'll be putting everything on there. I'll also be putting it on my YouTube channel. Um, probably like all those uh, behind the scenes video diaries of me freaking out. And there's plenty <laughs> of that. Plenty of that. Right. Um, just to let you know that I'm human uh that stuff will probably be put up on youtube i mean i'll also be sharing it on facebook i'm at ots world travel on facebook so okay. as well as my blog as well as otsworld.com so yeah. there you go i really hope that uh if you are at all curious about this epic adventure that uh follow sherry and support her journey um <laughs> and then one one super quick question because we are we're already um, running a little long, but there was a question, um, and maybe you can just kind of give a quick answer. Um, do you have to be rich to do this much travel? To do all the travel I've done? Yeah. I think oh. some of our viewers are wondering, like, no. how do you afford to live on the road like this? Well, I didn't have a home for 11 years. I mean, I well, lived on payment? the road. No rent. <laughs> and yeah, and so no rent. And because I had a blog, as you know, um, a lot of it was work and some of the trap, well, some, a lot of the travel is paid for, um, once blogging became a profession. So that, that was very helpful, I would say, but no, I, I mean, I haven't owned a car or I didn't own a car for 18 years. I live in a tiny studio apartment. It's, I think the key for me was I simplified my life. That was one of the things travel taught me without a doubt. Um, I completely simplified my life. Yeah, because I wanted to travel. So I downsized that's everything that's into a little yeah. package. Yeah. That's and what I always say too, is like experience is not things. Mm -hmm. That know? is absolutely. Things are transitory. They come, they go. But these experiences change and shape who you are for your entire life. And what's more enriching than that? <laughs> you know? So um, I'm like, I'm very wise today. <laughs> Ooh. I'm becoming very reflective as I, I too am about to embark on a two month journey. Exactly. So if you're here for Sherry, um, if, if you hadn't um, met me before, I would love to have you follow me as well. I'm going to be not on a bicycle, but I am going to be going through um, Portugal and then I'm going to start uh, the tour um, in Poland. That's going to be a cultural immersion tour through the northwest of Poland. Then mm -hmm. I will be going to the country of Georgia, one of my favorites in the world, for cheesy bread. Um, there's still time to join me if you're interested in Georgia. I've been doing it for years. I've got a lot of friends there. You will really have a behind the scenes, amazing, like life enriching experience in Georgia in the mountains on the Black Sea. Um, and then Slovenia. The world's fairy tale country. I'll be going there mm -hmm. and uh, drinking amazing amber wine and delicious food. And then I'm going to meet my friend Rachel in Albania. 
and yeah, uh, then Montenegro, and then we're going to stop by Croatia and Austria for a day. So uh, you've already found me on Facebook, and I, it's the same exact handle on Instagram. And more importantly, if you want information about how to go on my tours, you can just you can send me a message. You can put in the comments that you just get on my email list. Just tell me. Like, we're friends here. It's casual. Just put in there. Um, <laughs> so I think we have to wrap up. But first, thank you everyone so much for joining me this was an amazing discussion i it's, it's something that's very close to my heart uh because i believe travel really can heal the world and help us heal ourselves so what did we talk about today we talked about what transformational travel is and why you might need it actually you do need it um what does a transformational journey look like we talked about how to find a journey a transformational journey that's right for you personally, how you can select those or how they come to you. Um, and also tips for processing and synthesizing these experiences when you get back home. And then we also talked about what Sherry's next big epic journey is, which is bicycling from US state to US state. So I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you want the notes from today, because I know this was a really big topic, I'm going to transcribe it. It might take me a week or two. I'm going to try to get it out before I leave, but make sure that you have written notes in the comments so that I know that you want me to send it to you. So now, oh, I'm going to pick a winner, but before, also, you know, I'm doing these amazing transformative cultural immersion tours. Don't forget, there's still time. And if you go with me on the Georgia tour, you get this gorgeous luggage, which you can't see because if I try to I'll hurt myself. But three pieces of the best spinner luggage that, that you can get, I will give it to you as a gift. If you come with me to the country of Georgia, I don't know what's stopping you. Um, all right. This is how we are going to pick a winner. Jerry, I am just going to, I'm going to indiscriminately scroll. Okay. And you oh are going to so stop. excited. <laughs> I know. And it is, uh, I'm going to yell, and anyone who has the word nugget, um, anyone who's written a profound comment, um, they, I'm going to, they, I'm going to hit on it and, um, I'm going to try to maybe get somebody who hasn't won yet, but we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes <laughs> I just keep hitting it and it's like, it's not a nugget. So, all right. I'm scrolling. Tell me. When <laughs> I'm not looking. Oops. Stop. <laughs> It's Leanne. Woo! Leanne. Wow. Leanne, you win a Wallaroo hat. You get a $70 voucher to pick any hat on their website. And maybe if there's a sale, you can get two. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time with this discussion. Um, I just want to remind you this is the last show of the season i won't be here with you after this week because i will be traveling so still still come up still show up and engage on the facebook page and the instagram because i'm going to be sharing some amazing things with you but this is the last episode i'll probably be back in the fall maybe august september we'll see um yeah so thank you sherry is there anything else you want to oh say to everybody before we head out Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Crazy Journeys. And I really do hope I need all the support I can get on this capital to capital ride. Um, and I hope you'll I hope you'll follow along and see what it's like to take a journey, an epic journey that is intimidating, but exciting and hopefully transformative. Absolutely. This is the way to change your life is throw yourself in the deep end, <laughs> whatever that deep end is for you. <laughs> um, uh, and I love, I love so many of my, uh, guests. I should have asked them, the ones who have been on trips with me already, what, uh, transformation did you experience? That'll be a thought. I want you guys to think about it and put it in the comments later. Cause I'm going to come back in the comments and, uh, say hi to everybody, have some more conversations. So once again, thank you so much for joining Sherry. Thank you. Thanks. You no, know I love you. And I can't, hopefully we'll see each other maybe I somewhere know. around the world this year. I hope so. I hope so. We must. <laughs> I know. I know this pandemic, it's ridiculous, but thank you 
so much for joining me today. I think we uh, this was an excellent talk. And thank you, everyone out there, for joining us. And uh, we will see you somewhere in the world. Have a wonderful summer. Um, I love you guys. All right. Bye.